Hello, welcome to OnQA. So in this session, we are going to talk about the software project initiation process. So while the, the project kick-started, while the project is initiated, what is that process? What we do there? What are the different people who are part of this? And once it is started, what are the next step that that would go as a collaboration along with the software project and that's all we are going to talk about in this session step by step all about this software project initiation process let's get started the agenda in this session we will talk about the brief about the project initiation process the overview and then we'll talk about what exactly is the kickoff the different project milestones, the schedules, and then we talk about the different project roles in the point of business analyst, in the point of development team, the QA team, and the project management team, the, the different roles and responsibilities that we talk about. And then we talk about the complete software development lifecycle pattern or the process, what and where it gets started and how it continues in the process of software implementation. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's see. The first thing that you must know, what is this project initiation? The project initiation is a systematic approach of determining the requirements at a base. And then we need to outline the candidate solution. If we are in a state to do that, then we discuss what to be, we can consider. We can discuss what we are going to do about. So that's all about the initiation process. And this initiation process has got four stages in it. The first stage is called initiating a phase. And in the initiating a phase, is the primary, the first project staff identification. Let's say one from the management, the another from the technical, the third person from the business, the fourth person from the, the QA, and the one person from the overall, the project management. Once we identify the core people, then we talk to the stakeholders and the exact contact persons and see what we can start what we can do about this project and we would explain what and how we can deal about it and what and how we can do about it once that is done once we're in a good with the project initial stage then we identify the different roles the project managers the technical leads the subject matter experts the service owners the contact stakeholders and the remaining group of people and once this phase is done, the next phase that we deal is known to be the kickoff. In the kickoff, we identify who can lead the team and who can regularly schedule a meet, a connect amongst the team. And then we discuss the goals, the milestones, the project accomplishments. And we keep on adding the tasks so that team is aware. We discuss about them, we clarify about them, and we get the basic idea about the project requirements. And that is so-called the kick stuff. Once the kick start is done, or the kick off is done, the next phase, which is important in the project initiation, is called keeping the project healthy. If you wanted to keep that project state in a healthy pattern, we need to have regular reviews. We need to have proper strategy defined. We need to review them. We need to get connected and see what are we trying to accomplish? What are we trying to do together? Once this phase is making the project in a healthy state where we understand how it is being driven, who is taking care of, what are things could be handled, then we come to know what kind of project state is all about. If that is healthy, then we plan for a go live category, a go live day. When can we go for MVP? When can we go for a beta release? And what are things that we require? We require a development strategy. We require a test plan. 
we require a communication channel and the sparks and we require so and so support we require trainings we require this kind of implementation model we require an agile technology so we define everything and that gives the go live plan so these are the four main modules which take place in the project initiation once this is done let me explain you in detail the exact overall project initiation process if you look at this slide it explains three things the first thing is all about the initiation the second thing is all about the mvp most viable plan what is this so this most viable plan is all about the complete feasibility study of the application or study of that particular project and then we determine and so on so dates we are good enough so that by that time we could be able to done so and so things for this project and we could be able to deliver certain things which are unique or which are stable or which are which boost our confidence and that is so called most viable plan and it explains so many things it explains what is the scope and what can be the constraints interfaces exclusions assumptions risk and the major requirements the parts the core team the role and responsibilities contact persons everything and everything together we plan for a mvp once it is done it gives you the dates release one can be happening on so and so date release two can happen on so and so days this is the time box for this particular a deadline this is the time box of the another deadline so we define and that makes clarity what we are going to work about how long we are going to delay about and when we are going to handle this project to the customer and that is the primary decision or primary plan we take up in the point of mvp and this is a model where it explains the exact schedules it explained initially we are going to be part of in the requirement discussion from 4 to 6 hours for 1 to 2 weeks once it is done we take part 8 hours to understand and to design the complete documentations and then from 5th week to 10th week or 12th week we start designing the code we start designing the documentation we start integrating the code once everything is done we deliver the project to the qa and as the qa we test it we verify the smoke functional integration system regression everything once everything is good at the 18th month we are good to deliver the project to the customer or at 18th week we should be able to deliver the project to the customer so that it could be the schedule which we aim to deliver we plan for a proper schedule in the project initiation as well and once it is done the development people would plan a broader architecture how it can be what it can be how do we design the applications once this is done this kind of model that we take up to implement in a complete sglc is it agile is it v model is it a scrum so mostly these days people would be interested to go about the agile in the agile sglc it's all a single explanation where it begins with a shorter span of cycles which reduces lots of time lots of revenue to the customer and it is very easy to pick the user stories sprint by sprints and then deliver to the customer in shorter cycles and if you look at this slide it explains everything in a short the conceptual place nothing but the project initiation and then the first sglc phase called requirement analysis and then the software design software implementation testing and then des, uh, deliver the project and then support the customer so this is all about the uh, complete uh, project initiation process how it begins and what are the things which are part of it and what are we going to do and what can be additionally taken care in the software project initiation that's all we look at so thank you so much for watching the video hope you liked it please visit orqa.com there are so many videos presentations articles and books pdfs with respect to automation test management and then performance testing and functional testing thank you so much please do visit onq.com thank you mm -hmm.